What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chanel, the creator of Ministry, And it's your girl, author, Chris King. How y'all doing? What's up? What's up? So I know you guys have been waiting for us since 7 p.m. We had some te technical difficulties, but we're here now, and we're going to be dealing with how do you know when you're settling, right? So we're going to, Chris and I, we're going to have an open, candid conversation. I know you guys are used to us having guests, but this week we decided that we were going to have the conversation amid one another because we have some personal experiences that we want to share with you guys. Yes. So, you know, when it comes to settling and how we know when we're settling, it, I feel like we all settle. I don't think that we get 100% from anybody anybody a woman man it doesn't matter you're, you're gonna there's gonna be something about that person that you wouldn't necessarily you know think right. okay I, I wanna I want this in my relationship I think you have to decide you know what your pros and what your cons are mm -hmm. so you make your list out you know you think about the things that you like about this particular person you think about the things that you don't like about this particular person and you determine what you can actually live with you right. know and then you kind of start from there so, I mean, we all settle at some point. One of the things that me and Chris have been talking about over the last couple days is, you know, when we go to our friends and we ask about, um, we ask for advice and we say, hey, you know, what do you think about this or what do you think about this particular scenario? And your friends always have this picture perfect answer or they always seem to have the answer to your issue. But the reality of the matter is, is that when you find yourself in a particular situation, you really have to figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Like you can't listen to your friends. And I think I'm kind of venturing over into another topic now, but that's okay because we had talked about this whole idea of when do you listen to your friends and when don't you listen to your friends and it right. ties into settling because you know your friends that have you thinking well I'm settling right you, you don't know. deserve that you can do better right exactly mm -hmm. so you have to figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you right you know and you can't worry about what anybody else thinks like you can't like y'all I'm gonna tell you anybody knows me I'm I'm real stubborn when it comes to this thing like I've had people say, well, I don't like this particular person that you date, or I don't like him, or, I don't like the way he does this, I don't like this or that, and that's partially my fault. And see, it ties into another issue because you probably shouldn't tell your friends about... Yeah, don't, you can't tell them too much information, you can't, you can't. Right, right. So you probably shouldn't tell your friends about, well, you shouldn't tell them when things are going bad unless you want to get their opinion, and then in that, they'll probably say, well, you said them, you said them, but not really, y'all, because you're never going to get 100%. Right from a person right because no. I said I'd never be with anybody to snore my husband <laughs> snore I mean he be calling the cows and you know I mentioned to you about an email that I received from a, a reader of mine and I want to share that because it, it ties into settling and how we um, how we think we want something but then we see something else and we was like it's like the 80 20 rule right, you right. ever heard of the 80 20 rule so you have 80 percent but the 20 percent that you're not getting looks so good on the other side that you know what i'm saying we want to give up that 80 for that 20 and then we realize once we have that 20 that you know we missing so I much don't more know, i'm a risk taker i'm a risk taker so i don't know that 80 20 because a lot of times you like the grass is greener on the other side right. or you think the grass is greener on the other or, you know people say well you think the grass is greener on the other side but it's not really greener on the other side but I'm that person I'm like well let's see if it's greener on the other side and, and like, that's how you get in I'm not trouble. a safe player I'm not a safe player. that's how you get in trouble let me read let me read this email to you guys and then I'm gonna get into that the grass is greener on the other side okay so, um, one of my readers, she read my book, Cross in Love, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to get into all the, everything that she wrote, but she wanted to thank me for, you know, my book and how it made she her, um, take a closer look at her life and the choices that she, she made in relationships. So she was telling me that she's been, that, um, she identified with each of the characters in my book, but in particular, she identified more with Darcy and Shantae. So she says... Dear Chris, I have been hurt by love so many times to the point where I was just over it completely until I met my husband Carl. Mm -hmm. Carl knew about my past. I needed, I needed him to know, especially if I was going to give him a chance and possibly give my heart away again. And he was patient with me. 
Okay, that's a, that's a plus. Right. You gotta be patient. All right, we have But been, listen to the rest of the story, though. <laughs> okay, so we have been <laughs> married for three years, mm -hmm. but then I met Marcus, okay, about a month ago. I wasn't trying to cheat on my husband with Marcus. Things, whatever, where'd I go? Okay. I wasn't trying to cheat on my husband, but Marcus does things that Carl doesn't, and I don't mean that in a sexual way, and I apologize if I'm giving away too much information, but I feel you would understand. Anyway, Marcus gives me the attention that Carl does not, and he wants the same things out of life that I do. Even though I hated her character, I feel just like Shantae at this point in my life, like I was so ready for love again that I settled for someone that may not be the one for me. Before things get out of hand, do I th do you think I should end this affair with Marcus or end my marriage with Carl? Thanks for crossing love. I'm so crossed at this point in my life. Mm, she is real crossed, She is girl. real crossed. And like I told her, I can't tell you, you know, what to do, what how to um, move ahead with your marriage or continue the affair or end the affair. But I did use the analogy that you said the grass is greener on the other side. So, and then I say, if you have a lawn, and in this analogy, the man is your lawn, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have this lawn, and you know, weeds pop up every now and then, you know, and if you like me, you got weeds in your lawn, okay? You got weeds, yes, weeds. And they are a <laughs> sight for, they are unsightly. You don't want to see them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if you spray them, try to get rid of them but they never really go away unless you dig the roots up you know dig the weeds up by the roots now that's a long story chris well i'm I'm, <laughs> get, I'm, I'm trying to break it down Woo, girl i'm trying to stay with you I'm trying, okay so you walking by you see a nice lawn uh-huh i mean beautiful uh -huh. green lush everything mm -hmm. so you're like let me check this lawn out it's looking good it look better than my lawn right until you see the backyard. Okay. Okay, the backyard ain't nothing but dirt. Okay. Soil is hard, ain't producing nothing, you know, but- It's gonna take you long to see if that lawn producing. But I'm saying though, we too quick, we just look at the outside. Okay, and then it. when we get into it, you know what I'm saying, you realize, okay, this ain't all it's cracked up to be. Right. Your lawn ain't even complete. Right, but that ain't always the case. See, that's the thing. People have these analogies about the grass is not greener on the other side, but is it really? You don't really know. So I guess each individual situation is But how do you find different. out before you commit? Like, don't commit, and then you know that you're gonna question if you see something else better, you're, gonna, you're just gonna up and leave every relationship? Well see, this is my thing. If you are looking at somebody else's lawn, then I feel like, and it, I know there are certain dynamics to a relationship, but I feel like, I'm wondering like, did you settle in the first place with your current lawn? Mm -hmm. Because if you rushed and got into a situation or a relationship with your current lawn, then of course you're looking at somebody else's lawn because that lawn don't really do it for you, but you was just so desperate that, you know, you hurried up and you got into a situation that you probably shouldn't have gotten in in the first place. I learned this lesson a long time ago. You know, me being single and never married mm -hmm. and no children, you know years ago I used to I had two situations in particular where I met a guy who I knew didn't do it for me mm -hmm. but he was an attractive guy he wasn't a bad looking guy but he just didn't do it for me but we were cool and I'm like okay well maybe this is not what I want this is what I need right so after us hanging out for a little while I decided well I'm gonna give it a try those situations always end disastrously because you settle because it's not what you want. It appeases you for that moment, but then over the long term, it doesn't do it for you. So next thing you know, you're looking at somebody else's lawn or you're looking at another lawn because he never did it from you. You have to be honest. Did he ever do it for me? No, I was lonely. I was bored. I wanted to spend time with someone. So I did that. And I can't tell you, every time that I've been in a situation like that, it has ended so crazy because the moment I meet somebody that I really like, right. I'm like, I don't want to be with you anymore. And that's not right to What them. about the person that you really like? I mean, is it? do you really like them because you see something in them that you're not getting in your current situation? Well, and I don't have a you, current situation. You know what I mean, though. <laughs> you know what I mean. But then when you get with them, you realize, okay, it was good. You know, you just you don't have the entire package. I think that's a question that each individual person has to ask themselves when they find themselves in that particular situation. 
You know, because I think a lot of times, y'all, I can sit here and I can say, this is my list. This is what I like, X, Y, and Z, until I really meet a real human being and we have that connection, we have that chemistry. I have met men who I, if you had asked me, Chanel, would you date him? I would say absolutely not. But we had a certain chemistry, you know, a certain vibe, and I'm like, I really like him. But if you had just asked me off the cuff if I, if I would date him, if I saw him on the street, I would say no. So, I mean... I think, you know, certain chemistry, chemistry can be misconstrued as lust, too. So it can you be. Gotta, you got to uh, be careful with that. It can but be. But I think you have, like you say, you got to be honest as to what you're looking for. Right. Everybody has their level of standards. Right. Uh, I don't think that you should lower your standards mm -hmm. uh, due to loneliness mm -hmm. or just, you know, Cuffing season is about to start. I haven't participated you know. in cuffing season in so long. <laughs> My mama says her baby look well. Yeah, I did have a, a little um, medical scare earlier today. She had me worried. But your girl is here. Your girl is here. I had a little medical emergency. Um, I had the ambulance and everything, y'all. But look at God. I'm right here with you. Hey, Samantha. Hey. Hey, she was the mistress of ceremony at the event that I spoke at last oh, week. Oh, okay. Yes. Hey, Samantha. Yes. So, like I was saying about settling, like, you have to know what you want. Don't lower your standards due to, you know, oh, I, I need a man at this point in I my life. I'll be by myself first before I lower my standards. I'm sorry. And women out there, I'm, I know sometimes it get lonely, and I know we want to have companionship and you know we want to you know it's cuffing season coming we want to have someone to cuff with but I'm gonna tell you you're going to regret it if you know that that man doesn't do it for you don't try to force it don't try to make something that's not but what Just would wait. you what would you be willing to accept like I said I'm not I, willing to accept Nothing. That's settling. We just said how to. So you think I settled settle. for my husband because I said I would never, you know, be with anybody that snore. And I mean, he be, I mean, sound like a tractor every night. But it was other things that kind of superseded that. So there were other characteristics about. I mean, snoring really, Chris. Uh, yes, that really? is a big deal. Like yeah. I would say, I don't want to be with a man who snores. But at the end of the day, if my boo snore and everything else is right, then I don't really care. We just have to work it out. Uh, you miss don't a lot. You, you miss a lot of sleep when when they snore. But if you know certain things that you say you're not going to accept, like for instance, I say I would never date a man who smokes. I mean that. Like I don't want to date a man who smokes, or I would never date a man. Like I'm just now embracing this idea that. Most, most people, especially at my age, have children, right? He could have a child, one, but I probably won't date no man with like two or three or four or five kids. I'm not going to do it. And I pray to God I don't settle on that because I just don't want the baby mama drama. You know, What I'm, if he doesn't have baby mama drama? What well, if he has that many kids but it's no. a very civilized civilized situation is it it are his children young children are they grown what's the situation i mean does it matter as long yeah, as it's it a civilized thing i'm not gonna date i typically don't well this has been my rule of thumb i don't date men with children that are younger than five okay because that's baby mama drama i don't care what you say well, yeah, baby mama drama. Yeah, yeah. Unless, the, the, unless the child's mother is just not in the picture at all it's baby mama drama listen somebody said i realized i was settling when i when i found myself making excuses for neglecting me and disregarding my feelings and i and i yes. agree with you stephanie because you know, even married, you go through those times where your significant other is not giving you that um, that attention or not paying, doesn't, you don't feel like they care about your emotions. And I am, I'm that way. I don't trust anybody with my emotions, but because I, because not I don't. Not even me? Huh? No, I, nobody, you know, <laughs> nobody. And I mean, I might share a little, but I'm not going to put it all because I, I don't feel like, I would get the reaction that I need. You see what I'm saying? But I don't think that's settling. No. I don't think that's settling. No. Because when I go through You just that, guard it. I'm guarded. But when I go through that with my husband, as far as neglecting and disregarding my feelings, I have to communicate that. And you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I'm settling. Sometimes he's responsive. Sometimes he's not. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, it all depends on what we're willing to... So, let me ask you this question, though, about your husband now. We're getting okay. into... We're treading into, you know, okay. the water. Okay. Was he always dismissive or 
not giving attention to your feelings even before you got married? Uh, well, it, sometimes, like when the conversation gets real, men tend to shut down. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But you have to be, you know, you have to continuously, you know, let them know, hey, I'm not just going to let this, you know, so over. So how did you cope with it? Did you just accept the fact that he shut down or did you guys have a conversation and he changed your behavior? Well, I, we had the conversation and like most men, they will change for a while and then they'll go back to their regular behavior. So I've, what I've done is I know what to how to share my feelings and like what to share and what not to share pretty much with your husband mm -hmm. you can't share everything with him i mean i tell him everything he's my best friend but i'm talking about emotional but, so that you know that by, and i have to reevaluate i had to analyze my feelings too am i doing am i tripping am i doing too much you know what i'm saying things like that but no it, it's with anybody it's not just my husband i just you know i just can't because i don't trust See, your not, so the opposite i kind of put everything out on the table what kind of you know what no i'm gonna take that back i don't put everything out on the table but what i do is i suffer in silence try right. not to put my emotions out there so i find that it works best for me if i have that conversation it always say, hey, feels better when you yeah. say what's on your mind right absolutely right. yeah so you so you didn't settle for him being dismissive or oh no it's not like i'm not gonna say nothing i'm gonna okay. say how i feel but you know the reaction that i get i'm just gonna i, I know how to move moving forward you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. so do you think you settle no <laughs> Well, there you have it. Let's look at some of the comments here. Uh oh, I'm sorry. Communication is key. Communication is communication very important. Communication is very important, but you know, a lot of people don't know how to communicate. Right. You know, they rather just kind of be dismissive of the subject rather than sitting down and having a candid, open conversation. Right. Yeah. And then most people settle because they can't, like you said, they can't communicate. Mm -hmm. So they rather just take what they're given instead of trying to make things better. Right, right, right. So I don't know, y'all. You know, it's a it's a thin line when you talk about settling and you know, we have we have these picture per perfect views of how a relationship mm -hmm. is supposed to look. We read these memes on Facebook and Instagram, and then we try to apply it to our own personal lives, but it, it doesn't It's not fit. reality, no. It doesn't fit. And I'm learning that even at 43 years old, I'm learning that relationships aren't picture perfect. Relationships are actually very messy. Yes. You know, they're messy. And you have to fight through it. You have to be willing. You have to be strong enough mentally and emotionally mm -hmm. to go through um, all the issues that can arise. Right, right, right. Absolutely. I'm looking to see if we have any comments on Instagram. Right, and like like um, Stephanie says, some some men don't know how to have the conversation when it's emotional, and they and they do, and they shut down. And I'm not saying all men do that. Women do it as well. It's just you have you have to be emotionally stable in order to be in any kind of successful relationship, whether that be intimate or like a friendship. You have to be as emotionally stable. Right. So I'm going to kind of open up the conversation a little bit broader and just kind of, so let me ask you this, because this is a part I'm learning now, guys, that I really don't know how to date. I don't think I've ever known how to date. And, you know, for those of you who know me, I didn't date for like eight years. And I, I mean, it's probably like 10, because I really ain't been on no date even since I've been living here in Atlanta. But um, my, my question is, is like, is it settling, you know, when you meet someone and, you know, I pretty much know what I want, you know, when it comes to a mate. I can I can rattle it off. I can tell you what characteristic, what qualities, what traits, and all those things that I want my man to have. But you know, realistically, when you're meeting someone for the first time or you're meeting them for the first few times, they're not gonna be as readily, you know, as excited as maybe we as women are. So is it settling if, you know, they're not readily you know like ready to engage in relationship or engage is um, to the no, extent that we want them to i don't engage. think so because that can always change you know what i'm saying but like, how do you deal with in the meantime until they get to the point where they're like okay i want to you know i'm ready i'm ready to engage you in this level of relationship and how do you cope with that in the meantime because i know i struggle with that like not struggle but i deal with that because my friends will say oh no girl he need to be doing this he need to be doing that but i'm like we just met and although i know what i want and you know i'm ready 
I'm ready to settle down. I'm not saying I'm ready to settle down with one particular person, but if I meet the right person, I am ready to be in a mm-hmm. healthy monogamous relationship. But in the meantime, while I'm dating, because dating and dating not exclusive, like I've had friends say to me, you know, you're settling, or if that's not what you want, then don't don't deal with it. And you'll find yourself by yourself if you take on that mentality. Yeah, it depends on the behaviors that they that they are giving off, like. Uh, like okay, say that he he is persistent and you're, you guys are communicating mm-hmm. every day, every other day. You're going out, mm-hmm. but he hasn't taken that next step as far as what, let's say labels or you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like what you feel like or your friends. And labels like don't come be. by the way. They don't, and you gotta work towards that. I don't feel like it's settling. It just means that you are you are building that relationship, and then if. I, how much time should you give it I think is the question right right right. how much time I don't I think you would know and they would and the man or woman would know if they are willing to uh, go forward with the relationship a good month right okay. a good month a I, good month I don't I don't well you know what I was gonna say six months but a month I think a month I think in a month's time a man should know if right. you're someone that he can kind of, you know. Right. I'm not saying he has to make like a firm Six decision. Months is a long time. Well, I mean, I know most most I'm men. I'm not say, saying a month get I'm married and all committed, that. I'm saying to be in a committed relationship, right, right. it takes more than a month. Right. No, you would know if but, you want to be in a committed relationship with him after a month. Right. I think for us, we know, but I think for men. Even though they may have an idea, they usually don't commit no, we give, in a month's we, time. We don't give men enough credit. I mean, we, we sometimes act like men are slow. They know. They know if they if they see something in this in this woman that right, they but want to go, to go, go clap forward it with, down, go ahead right. and and they get they get scared just like we do. No, they don't, I don't know no men like that. I mean, they get scared. They don't share it, but they get scared. We have a comment, Shamika. Hey, Shamika. Hey. She said, you know, you have settled when your needs aren't met. That you feel is important for you to have a healthy, thriving relationship. But see, that definition is different for each person. Like that goes back to the question I was asking. Like, okay, so if I meet a gentleman today, right? Right? You know, we go out, we talk. You know, nowadays people got this thing with the text message and they want to text you. You know, they don't really want to talk on the phone. Like, I want, I may want to talk on the phone. I may want to spend more time. Well, she said your needs are met. Your needs aren't met if you, if they're texting you my and they need, want to Right, so my phone. need for communication. So is it settling if I say, well, okay, it's a new, this new generation, they like to text. Is that settling if I say, well, I don't really like to text. I prefer to talk on the phone, but I settle for the text because maybe no, we see each other more often. Is no, that settling? That is very much settling because okay. that's not, I mean, if all your communication is via text, then how can that possibly be a real relationship? Well, it's not a real relationship until you guys decide that you guys are going to be in a committed relationship. Like if you're just meeting someone, you know, and I mean, you could say, hey, I prefer to talk on the phone, but you have to give a space. Well, that's not settling. If I mean, if you guys just met, then that's just dating. Well, I'm saying, a, co- I'm saying a couple of weeks, though. A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks and all we're doing is texting? We text, We talk on the phone every now and again, but we don't talk on the phone as much as you would like to talk on the phone because he prefers to text. Right. Well, I mean, settling? if it's just a couple of weeks, then you know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm ready for a committed relationship, but I would continue to see where things go. You see what I'm saying? Right. See, that's a, it's like a, a gray area for it, me. It really is, but I think, like, some women would they'll they'll say okay if a man is able to uh provide for me financially you know what i'm saying then okay good he might not be uh what i need emotionally but he he's able to take care of the household so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna lock him down because i need my financial security and then some women say okay well he gives me everything i need emotionally but you know the money is a little funny i make more a little more money than him so i'm gonna settle because he gives me the attention and the affection that i need so it depends on what we feel like we need in the relationship yeah but that attention and affection ain't gonna last because if you're not who you really want to be with then it's gonna become common and you ain't gonna want to be in that thing. And the moment you meet someone who's more and that's attractive, where resent- or who make more money, comes in. Then it ain't gonna work. I don't know. 
Dating is supposed to be time to enjoy each other and get to know each other. Absolutely. But that's Absolutely. relative though because like I'm I'm telling you guys like especially men that are purpose driven or men who have something going on for themselves. They it's like in my experience they don't want to like I don't know, maybe it's just me, but we spend time, but it's not like every day or every other day. Right, no, I feel like when you're in the dating process, the best way to get to know each other, the more time that you spend together, uh, and I think that's important. Like, I'm not saying every day, but at least it's seven days in a week, okay? I need to spend at least five days with you. And I'm not five. five and I'm not. And I'm not, I don't want to spend five days I'm not with talk, no man. I'm Girl, not you know how busy I am. I'm not talking about twenty four seven. I'm not talking the whole day, but I'm saying at least a couple of hours. Plus, you know what I'm saying? I know when me and my husband first got together, we were always. How old were you guys? It don't matter. It matters. It don't matter. We it was matters. always doing something. You see what I'm but saying? What? Then that's how we got to know each other. You're gonna find out, Chris, real soon. Well, you don't know. We you don't know. know. You <laughs> trying to say how to find out real soon, girl? No, the devil is a lie. No, <laughs> what I was trying to say, I was speaking in regards to everything that you have going on right now. Right. That you're going to have to be purposeful about the time that you spend with your husband because you're gonna find you got so much. And right. You, you're a mom. Right. You right. know. And so. I have, and I and yes, the schedules change, and we have to make sure that we make that time. Yes, our date nights as in, um, aren't often as they used to be, you know what I'm saying? But you have to be like, okay, here's the time. And that's and we continue, you continuously get to know somebody every single day. It doesn't matter that you're married or you're dating or you're in a committed relationship. You you still they're still growing, you're still growing, you're continuously learning about each other. So that time is still important. So how do you deal with settling when you are in a marriage? Cuz I mean, it, that concept doesn't just go away. Right, and I tell myself, you know, um, yes, there's things, you know, that I would love for my husband to do differently, and I'm sure there's things that he would love for me to do differently, and as long as we communicate those things, then we're not settling, but I also tell myself that I would, it doesn't matter, I would never leave my husband. I mean, unless he, cheats, <laughs> unless he cheats on me, unless he cheats on me. But I tell myself I would never leave him, and then it makes me question, How many okay, times you got to cheat before you leave? One. What the hell? One. Okay. <laughs> what y'all think about that? No, one. Once. Because we done been too we done been through too much. I'm gonna tell you. You should have got the cheating out when we were when we I'm were just a, I'm veering off topic, but I'm gonna tell y'all since I got y'all's undivided attention. You can't have my man, so he can cheat once, you're not gonna get him. Uh-uh. No. I make his life a living hell, but you can't have him. No, if he if you were willing to get him, then he's not mine, okay? So you can have him. Bye bye. Things happen. No, hell fuck that. <laughs> I bet. I'm sorry. Excuse my friends. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Because I guarantee if you did that, then he wouldn't feel the same way that you're feeling. But what I'm saying is. I would never, I would never leave, I would never leave him. So it's like, you so stupid. She, I shook a nerve, y'all. She did, she did. <laughs> don't, don't play with me. Don't play with me. She went somewhere, honey. I did, she went I did. Somewhere. I had a flash. A flash she went back. somewhere. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> I would never. Now, nah, look, I'm with her now. Now, look. I'm, I'm not going to leave him, I don't think, on the first go around. But I am going to regulate and put the law down. Right, yeah, right. Absolutely. And see, I done been through that. We, we, you know, we had our share of infidelity <laughs> before we got married. You know what I'm saying? And I had to let, and I don't feel like I should have to go through that while we're married. So if I go through that while we're married, after we done been through that phase, we done sold all our seeds or whatever we did, you know what I'm saying, then it's a wrap. But I feel like even if I'm not um, getting everything I need as far as affection-wise, emotional-wise, I don't think that I would leave. And maybe that is settling, but I don't think that I would, you know, no, end the relationship. No, you have to put the work in. Right. I've never been married, but I do know that it takes work mm -hmm. and patience. Mm -hmm. You know, to really work through different issues. What happened to our audience? You guys, I know you got some feedback, honey. Cause... I think it was my language. I'm sorry, y'all. I had a little flash. Chris, 
I was like, uh-uh. We not going to have No, man. We not going through that, y'all. So, anyway, let me ask you this. So, typically, when you first, because I'm speaking from my experiences, and obviously Chris is talking from my own personal experiences, but let me ask you about this. So, you meet a guy, right? Because you, I'm single. So, most of the time, like when I meet someone, He's probably he had a life before I came into the picture, right? So he's probably dating someone else, and maybe not necessarily exclusive, but you know how men do. Is it settling for me if you know when we first meet? You know he say, "Well, I'm dating. I date multiple women." You know, um, you can't really regulate that because you just met him. So is it settling yeah. if I decide to date him, knowing? That he's dating multiple women. Only if you're deciding to date him exclusively. Like if you not if you're not keeping your options open, then heck yeah, you're settling. So is it settling if I call him up one day and say, "Hey, let's hang out," and he said, "Well, you know what? I have plans already." What you mean? I mean, you gotta elaborate on that. He said he date multiple women. You already know that. Right. So you call him. And say, hey, let's hang out. And he's like, I have plans already with... All right, so you, you're going to feel some type of way. Yeah, it's but, a settling. But yes, because you wouldn't feel some type of way if you did if you had your options open. So if he's telling you that he's dating multiple, you know, if he's dating other people until he figure out what he's going to do, then that's what you need to do as well. But if you're putting all your attention and focus on him and he's not doing that for you, then absolutely. Now, how many times I'm going to tell you this Atlanta and I don't have a whole lot of options? I'm telling you, it's men out here in these streets. She what? just don't know where to go. You know what I'm saying? She don't know where to look. And then she discriminate. Ooh. Let's come out against her. No, y'all. See, I'm very particular about the type of man that I want because I got to spend the rest of my life with him. It's my life. So I get to decide how I'm going to spend that life. So I got to make sure that there's certain aspects in place, certain characteristics, certain things. Well, tell the world she what you're have looking a for. certain type of swagger. Mm-hmm. You know, he got to have swag. You got to. He got to have some swag. He got to have some some charisma about himself. He got to be intelligent and articulate and engaging, y'all. Yeah. He got to be purpose driven. He got to be God fearing. He got to be fun loving. He got to be family oriented. He got to want to be with me. <laughs> you know, he got to want to be here. He got to want to be here. It's a difference. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He got to. I want him to be all up in in this. You know, all up in my space. I think there's a lot of men out there like that, Chanel. I don't know them because you you I I. You don't give them a chance. Yes, I do. You can't look at a person and determine whether or not. You cannot yes, judge I a do, book y'all. by his cover. I can tell you whether cannot he, judge a book by his cover. I can tell whether he got some swag. I mean, yeah, but other than that, all the other details that you're describing, you can't tell that just by looking at a person. No, There's I no can't. No, I'm going to have a conversation because I've seen some attractive men that when he opened up his mouth, he was not intelligent at all. <laughs> I bet uh, when we met Darren the other day, right, oh. Darren? Oh yeah. Okay, uh, Darren. Darren Hansen. Yes. So I um, I was talking to him, and I bet he thought the same thing about me, which everybody know I'm a very educated black woman. Yes, I have my ghetto ways, as we all do. Okay. So I was talking to him the other yes. day, and I said, um, "Are you going to take advantage of the uh, dance studio in the in the studio?" He said, "Don't you mean?" Uh, don't you mean make? Uh, he said, "Don't you mean make advantage?" I mean, what did he say? What he corrected you like that? Yes, he corrected my English, and I was like, "I said, like, don't you mean what?" Yes, and I was like, "Uh, he, he, he. that's why he's short." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you know, but like I'm saying, open your mouth. You know, you might not say exactly what you mean at that, but I was a little bit <laughs> <laughs> they might be a little nervous speaking with you, so it. I mean, you got to give it a little more time. You got let them say a full sentence. Okay? You got what you mean nervous speaking with me? Yeah. What you mean? So you say when they open their mouth that you know what I'm saying they not that educated, but you don't. I, mean, I don't you know. know. I don't attract uneducated men. They don't even talk to me. The contradiction of it all. Oh my God. I'm just saying. I told you what I like, but y'all, it's just something about this. It, it kind of weeds out the foolishness. Yeah. Like, they may admire from afar, 
but ain't too many of them they're not too many of them let me get this correct not too many of them are going to approach me i don't get approached often i really don't like for someone to approach me it's really like rare honestly um typically the way i meet men is not by being approached like men that i actually engage is usually because we have something in common or we're out in similar uh we're doing we're in a place like a we have similar goals and purposes and we kind of connect that way the last gentleman that um i met that i really like he actually approached me in his own way but even he was kind of he kind of did it real sly because he pulled up in his ride. See, the swag. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> but even then, I was like, I don't know you. But then when he got me to talking about my purpose, see, there it is. I wouldn't go up to the car until he said, well, what do you do? And I was like, oh, at first I told him, I, I never lead off with ministry, being a creative ministry or anything like that. I always say I'm a business consultant for Comcast Business because that's what I do, y'all. That's what I do during the day. I have a day job. But when i thought about it i was like well yeah i'm the creator of ministry and i went up to the car you should come here's my car because right. then i you know because ministry is my passion so you're you know. telling me that you need somebody that's going to fight for you and, and like pursue you you I, like that you like to be chased no it's not even about the chase i think for me the fact that he wanted to know about me and know what i did like it was i i never really had a man ask me what i do but that's how he, i mean we ask men what they do all yeah the time. i never had a man ask me like that was like one of the first questions out his mouth and then he may not have known what to say but he was like what do you do and so i began to tell him what i what i did but i'm not passionate about my day job i'm passionate about ministry so when i transitioned into ministry i was like oh yeah let me come over and give you a car here and then that's what he was like is your number on that car and i said oh yeah my number's she right having now. flashbacks Yes, honey, and then he texted me his number, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> all right, I'm with it. I'm you are, with it. I'm okay, with it. so with it. breaking it down, your viewpoint on settling, okay, is if the grass appears to be greener, you want to try it out and see. Greener than what? I don't have greener than, grass. Greener than what you have. I don't like, have no grass. If you had grass. Okay. If I had grass, it's gonna be the grass that I want. Cause I'm not gonna buy no grass that I don't want. All right. You might think that you got the grass that you want, and then you turn around and then you see somebody else grass, and you was like, Oh my God, that grass is beautiful. Let me let me walk on it. Let I me might walk it. on it. See, that's what I'm saying. I I, I especially if I well, let me let me clear this up. Yes, please. If I have grass and I don't like my grass. It don't take another piece of grass to come over for me to get rid of my current grass. I'm going to get rid of that grass whether I get some more grass or not. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> what I'm going to do with my grass is I'm going to give it some TLC. Okay? And I'm going to try Why to... not marry? That's the difference. No, no. You. That's it. It's either whether you're married it or dating. It depends on why I don't like my grass. Now, no. my grass just needs to be watered. I water my grass. But if he what wilted, if he, I'm not no, no you gotta do wilted it. dead You got to give it some seed. Like some men, like it says, if a man findeth a good woman, he findeth what? A good thing. A good thing. And favor okay? with the Lord. So some men need seed, okay? Some men just need a little water. Some men need seed. Some men, some men need, you know what I'm saying, to be, you know how they say you talk to plants and they'll, they'll whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh -huh. all I'm saying <laughs> is you can't give up that easily. So I don't I'm think. Not, no, if, if I love him and I want to be with him, I'm going to fight. I'm a fighter by nature. So I'm going to fight for him. I mean, I Even fight, if you see the grass has potential, it doesn't really I have fight now for my situation that's not even a situation anymore and we're not married we're not even in a um exclusive relationship but i saw i saw and see so much potential in this person but if uh, if, uh, if you see something else and somebody else you're gonna go for that i'm gonna go talk to that grand right <laughs> now there you go look now the plan don't be telling me I'm something that telling you wouldn't you, do. I'm not telling yeah, see, you. There she goes trying to tell me what she wouldn't do. I'm you know, y'all good for that. Trying to the tell somebody about me, what, what The you thing that do. makes me different than my friends or other friends is I take my own advice, okay? I listen to myself first. <laughs> if I'm not going to take my own advice, I'm not going to give that advice to you. And that's to all the friends out there. Don't tell me something that you're not going to do, okay? And if you're in a similar situation and you're trying to tell me something that you're not doing, I'm not going to listen to you. 
Right, and most people tell you stuff that they're not doing because they live in a perfect world. But you, we, you and I both know that life doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that we will, you know, I don't want to use the word settle, but we'll just deal with until, you know, to see if things have the potential to get better. Right. And what would you want to say as far as how do you know when you're settling before we wrap up? How do you know when you settle? And I guess, <clears throat> see, for me, it's difficult. I mean, I guess I have my own view. Um, like uh, Shamika said, when your needs are not being met. And I think, excuse me, <coughs> not just not being met, but not being met on a consistent basis. Because, like you said, you're never going to get 100% of a person all the time. Okay? Because it's just not a perfect world but if somebody is consistently not meeting your needs if you've had the conversation on a continual basis and they refuse to make the adjustments then you have to decide is this something that you're willing to live with and if it is it's okay mm -hmm. you know but if it's not and you're like I can't do it then it may be considered settling if you stay in that situation so you have to evaluate your situation and figure out you know, if this is something that you can live with because I'm going to tell you, if you stay, it's not going to change. Right. And I can, and I feel like if you are testing the situation, you're letting them know how you're feeling about it and it's not changing and you continue to stay, then it is settling. But it's not settling until you put in the work and trying to fix the situation. If you're trying to fix the situation and um, they're not trying to hear it or they're not trying to, you know, compromise with you on the situation, then you're settling. Um, but I do think that you should at least be honest with yourself, be honest with them, try to see if it can be, you know, rectified in some kind of form or fashion. Um, if not, then it's a wrap. How long do you think you should give before you say it's a wrap? Three strikes are out in my book. But I mean, it don't take them three strikes of doing something consistently. But it doesn't have to be the same thing. Okay. Like, it doesn't... I mean, there's not one thing, okay, a woman's like, okay, I'm going I'm to just look past this and we're going to have a good relationship. It's more than one thing. Like, we have pet peeves. We have, you know, like certain things that men do or how they react to certain situations that we are willing to look past because they have such and such over here. You know, but um, it doesn't have to be okay. Like, you have three chances of me telling you um, you're not paying attention to me. But you cannot pay attention to me and then you can... And then once you do that, you do one certain thing. Like, say you're not paying attention to me. And then all of a sudden, I don't like the way you eat. Oh, my God. I don't like the way you, you know what I'm saying? It's like stuff that build up to Ooh. where you feel like you're like if, you, if somebody tell you they don't like the way you eat, yeah, that means they don't like you. Well, it's not I that. Love that. <laughs> they say they start that. nitpicking you about how you look or how you but dress. There's, they an don't underline, like you. there's an underlying issue. There's something else that's making them just pick at they every little thing. They don't like you. That's why they do that. It's like everything is going to irk them when they're not into you like that. That's when they're settling. Because it's a two-sided thing. Now, yeah, this is not a, a it's not thing. a one-sided thing. If somebody is nitpicking you and saying they don't like the way you eat or they don't like the way you dress, then they're not into you or they've fallen out of love with you mm -hmm. or the, the whatever it was, that spark or whatever, the chemistry, is it no longer exists. And so now they're settling by staying with you probably because they don't know how to be by themselves or don't want to be by themselves or they're fearful of what's on the other side of the door and that poses another question is are we as women willing to accept when a man has settled for us Woo! please don't settle for me jesus you oh! what I'm saying? no don't do it would you want to be told that you know i think that there's if something I about you that needs to change in order for them to be happy no i think i'm perfect no i'm just playing no i think if a man is settling for me, I think I'll know it. I think I'll know if he's not satisfied because... How would you know? Because like you say, it's the little nitpicky thing. You know? Um, something about my personality or he may not like the way I dress. He may not like my hair. He may not like my makeup, you know. He may yeah. not like the way I talk or how I carry myself. My husband myself. say I act like an old white lady. I mean, I don't know. But if I think that's, doesn't? no, I think that's more of a joke. I don't really think he 
but he really means that. What y'all think? I, like I mean, because I mean, all of us have flaws and things that could be better, like different habits and right. different little quirks about our personalities, you know. But that's what makes us who we are. That's one thing. If he's just saying, "Oh, you act like this," or you, you know, you this or you that, that's different. But when he starts to criticize you, he starts to criticize you, and it starts to make you feel some type of way. You know when it's coming from a funny place, or you know, and you yeah. know when it's coming from a critical place. But when he becomes critical of you, I'm trying to think as I'm talking about maybe a situation that I've been in where somebody was critical of me. But honestly, I can't think of a situation where I've dated someone where they were critical of me. Yeah, to make it question yourself and, you know. Yeah, I think you. I've been in situations where I felt insecure and maybe felt like I wasn't enough or that I wasn't worthy. I have, because I mean, I, I've dealt with low self-esteem and yeah, I deal every, with low self-esteem. Every, I deal with it right does. now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been in situations where I felt like maybe I wasn't, you know, maybe somebody else was a better fit for him or maybe I wasn't good enough for him or you know, but I've never, I can't think of a situation where I've been, that I've been in where a man has actually been critical of me. No, not based on something physical. Yeah. Now I've had people say I'm a little bit abrasive or, you know, one of my uh, exes, he said your mouth. Mm -hmm. He said some of the things that come out your mouth, but that was like years ago. You know, but I think that, that as far as all women, our mouths can get us in yeah. a lot of trouble. But it all depends on are they willing to, are they man enough to take it or, you know, to well, handle it or. Now, let me tell y'all this. Now, it's not man, man enough to take it because he, when he was speaking of my mouth, he was speaking of some years ago and he just recently said this to me. But now I'm not going to put my, like, I'm very particular when it comes to my man. My man, he ain't got to worry about my mouth. Because if he's a man that he needs to be behind it, he ain't got to worry about this. Because I'm going to take care of all that. He ain't got to worry about it. Whew, this lady think it's so easy. I it's know it's hard easy, but he ain't got to worry about it. Okay. Because we probably ain't going to be together if he ain't the man that I need to be. Not saying that he's perfect, but I'm just saying. You know, at his core, he needs to be that. Right. Because he's not going to be able to handle my personality if he's not. Right. I'm a different type of species. You know, it's going to take a lot, a lot of testosterone to really deal with Chanel, you know. Right. So I think he'll be okay. He'll be able to weather You'll that. be all right, future husband. Yes. Um, hey, hey, how are you? Now, to wrap up, Hi. guys. I, you're so sweet. So I think you know when you're settling, if you're honest with yourself, it's about what you need and what you deserve and what you want out of a relationship and <laughs> out of the... Uh, the significant other so just be honest with yourself about this we're still going to be looking at um, comments and questions later on even after the live feed and we'll be responding um, Chanel you want to tell them about ministry that's coming <gasps> Ooh, yes. we our panel on today hey, on today, on today. I'm not going to try to call out everybody's name because I'll forget but we have an amazing panel set up for you guys on September 30th League Tavern 6 p.m. Go to my um, Facebook page and my Instagram page to see who we revealed today. Yes. We revealed the panel today is going to be so exciting, guys. We're going to be dealing with how to work through heartbreak and not retaliate, not slice your tires, not slap the holy hell out of not show up at your door acting crazy. At 3 o'clock in the morning. At 3 o'clock in the morning. Ooh. We're going to not approach the other woman. Woo! Listen, I'm going to be there, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to be on the panel, but I am going to be showcasing my book, Crossed in Love. Let me yeah. let me show you all this real quick. Show her. Okay. Show, show Crossed her. in show Love. Her. I'm going to be giving away so many goodies, free goodies, and we're going to be, uh, we're also going to be, we're going to be doing some Let's Talk Girl Talk stuff. stuff. So it's going to be awesome. So make sure you're there September 30th. Yeah. 6 p.m. League Tavern going down. You guys can find me, your girl, Chris King, author of Crossed in Love at Lovesick, L-U-B-B-S-Y-C on Instagram and Twitter. You can get my book, which is so funny, so dramatic, so romantic. It's just everything you ever Everybody. look for in a book. Um, you can, yes, hype me up, girl. <laughs> Uh, you can find that everywhere. All your online retailers at chrisking.com. You get a free gift with purchase. We will see you guys next week, Wednesday, 7 p.m. 
right here let's talk girl talk we got a special guest for you i can't wait to reveal them later on this week all right also one of oh you're not gonna reveal them no okay no, no, no. oh so we can oh, you want to no nah, we don't have to we'll can, wait okay we'll, we'll wait. do you guys will know in a couple days mm -hmm. yeah we're gonna have a special guest next week for let's talk girl talk i can't ex i can't wait i will reveal the topic guys guess what we're gonna talk about next week Woo! after the heartbreak after the heartbreak life after the heartbreak and love have, after the heartbreak Ooh. yes we have an amazing guest that's going to be here with us next week at 7 p.m but guys um your girl chanel creative ministry you can find me at chanel nicole scott on all of my social media facebook instagram twitter you can also find me at ministry on facebook instagram and twitter until next week have a wonderful week talk to you guys soon bye